My name is Susan Magdaleno. I'm a senior scientist. For me personally, microRNAs are a fascinating field. I love being part of the community, interacting with other investigators that have the same drive, the same curiosity. And the fact that I can combine my day job, which is to develop technologies, with my love of discovery of new biology, I'm the luckiest scientist there is. MicroRNAs as a field really got started very slowly back in the 90s. It was just people finding that their sample preps had small RNAs within them. Once a microRNA has found its target, it binds tightly to it and dislodges protein translation machinery. And normally the impact of binding is fairly difficult to measure because the differences is very subtle. On the order of 10, 20, maybe 30% at most. In humans, there's about a thousand microRNAs, but there's new ones discovered all the time. MicroRNAs usually regulate more than one target at the time. They can bind up to a thousand, maybe more, different RNA targets based on their homology through the seed region. Sometimes genes are regulated by more than one microRNA too, so the complex interactions that happen are very difficult to understand. MicroRNAs are studied by understanding how much and where they're expressed, and you can do that. QRT-PCR assays, like a, a, a small RNA TACMAN assay. You can also look at groups of microRNAs, or all of them at the same time, if you use some next generation sequencing technologies. To get to more functional analysis of the cells, you can alter the amount of a microRNA within a population by introducing artificial microRNAs that increase the amount of microRNAs available, or by decreasing the amount of microRNA available by introducing inhibitors. So by altering how much microRNA is there, you then study the consequences or assign a role of a microRNA with a, a given cell function. You can even get the synthetic microRNAs in library format. You can get them in one at a time, 20 at a time, or all of them. So you can imagine a library collection of every microRNA known and introducing those in a high throughput way in tissue culture and doing some discovery work with the synthetic microRNAs. Ambion has been there from the very beginning in microRNA work. We launched our first kit for microRNAs back in 2003 to enable the isolation of small RNAs with the Mirvana RNA isolation kits. We follow that up with some disruptive technologies like the celsa ct small RNA kits that allow you to skip the isolation and just use lice cells to study microRNAs. For expression analysis, there's the TACMAN small RNA assays, and we also have next generation sequencing technologies that let you look at microRNAs in a population. For functional analysis, you can use the microRNA inhibitors and the microRNA mimics to alter the levels of microRNAs in your cells. And of course, we offer the other supporting reagents, such as controls for cell culture studies and in vivo studies, as well as the delivery reagents that are necessary to perform those experiments. MicroRNAs, well, what we know about them right now is really just the beginning. We only really understand a couple of the networks of microRNAs and how they function. So, of course, lots and lots more work has to get done. For example, uh, one of the really exciting areas for microRNAs is looking at what's the role of microRNAs in single cells. They've been tightly linked to different types of cancer, like prostate cancer, and ovarian cancer, and certain blood cancers. I think we're going to still continue to see discoveries on the basic research side where new ways microRNAs are regulating gene expression, new mechanisms, and new ways of biogenesis of these microRNAs. As a scientist, I'm really excited that I can be part of bringing new technologies that might open up completely new ways of thinking. So really great times to be a biologist, especially really great times to be a microRNA biologist. Thank you.